Hi, I'm Jim DiCola, Master Luthier for Gibson Guitars. Welcome to Gibson's Guide to Guitar Setup and Maintenance. In this episode, we're going to cover a very, very common issue with guitars. Virtually every guitar that has strap pins that's ever been made has a loose strap pin at one time or another. So in this case, we have a Les Paul and the rear strap pin cannot be tightened. Not to worry. The first thing we'll do is remove the strap pin and then we're going to dial it up. So sometimes it's just the nature of wood, right? It'll, you know, under high stress, you know, it can work loose or expand and contract and the screw can work loose. So first off, when you're using your uh, screwdriver to remove the screw or reinstall, make sure you have the proper size. In the case of most strap pins, they're gonna be a Phillips number two. If you try to use a smaller tip, you can strip it out and on a large screw like that under a lot of tension, that can uh, just be a lot to contend with and kind of messy. So you wanna use the appropriate screwdriver. Now, here's the part that everybody does. And if you're not, if you're not accustomed to this, you may say, what, really? But I'm telling you, everybody does this. Toothpicks, or I like to call them dual tapered ended luthier dowel rods. These are great for fixing strap pins or control screw holes. It's all the same kind of process. You can use toothpicks. Try to get in your MacGyver mode. Toothpicks, you can use like a, a wooden sticked cotton swab. They work great too. They're a, they're a little bit larger diameter than toothpicks. Or you can use dowel rods. So dowel rods it would be the preferred if, you, if you're at a hardware store and you can pick up wooden dowel rods of the appropriate size, you can use that. But more often than not, toothpicks, are the first line of action in, in fixing a hole. And, and even if you use one of the other methods, I'll still use a toothpick to kind of work the glue in because using glue, you can use wood glue. This is like a tight bond of wood glue or even Elmer's white glue is fine. And you're not really relying on the glue to hold the screw. You're relying on that glue to kind of fill the pores of the wood and hold that doll rod in. So when that glue is wet in the wood, it just kind of solidifies and then when you go to thread it in, it just forms around it and it'll actually be a lot stronger than just going into the wood itself. So I will typically take a toothpick and, and just dip it in the wood glue and then insert it in the hole and then just snap it off. And in this case, the size of the screw, you know, you can use a few toothpicks and for the depth of that, I'm going to grab a new toothpick and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wet it with the glue and wood glue and Elmer's glue are both preferred because if you get a little bit on the finish, you can wipe it off with a damp cloth and it's not going to hurt the finish. If you use a super glue, you could have the risk of that, uh, glue biting into that finish and that can, uh, cause a finish blemish. Or, and just be very unsightly. So I'll typically install the, the toothpicks like you just saw. And then a lot of times what I'll do is go ahead and take the sharp end of a toothpick once I get it tight. And I'll just kind of tap it in until snug. And I'll use wire cutters or just snap it off. If it's too short to snap off, I'll use wire cutters like so. Now that hole is filled. Then I'll take a scratch awl. You don't, generally you don't even have to re-drill. You can just take an awl and in the center of all that, just kind of get that screw started. And a little bit of that glue will squeeze out. And then I'll take that strap pin and just thread it in. And that wood glue will actually act like a lubricant. So you want to do it preferably while it's still wet like that. It'll allow that strap pin screw, you know, to go in easily. And then when you're done, there might be a little bit of squeeze out and you can use your damp rag to uh, wipe off any excess. There we go.
And there we have it. And that'll generally, once you go through that, it'll generally last longer than just, you know, the standard strap pin on its own. And that's very good. It's very common. I know techs for a lot of famous musicians. They always keep toothpicks and dowels in their tool kits to do the same thing. Uh, it's just very common. So that's how you would take care of that. You can also use a toothpick, as I said earlier, you know, to fix any kind of screw holes, you know, for pit guards or control covers. Uh, and now the next thing I'm going to show you, a lot of players, after they go through that, they may decide, well, you know what? If I'm going to have to replace that strap pin or tighten it up, I might want to go ahead with a strap lock. So strap locks are very nice. And we use, uh, depending, you know, uh, we generally use our regular conventional strap pin. However, we have certain artists that prefer strap locks and for their guitars, we'll use those. And uh, Slash is one of them, prefers the shallower style. And on that type of strap lock, you would have this component that goes on the strap and I'll show that in just a minute. And then that locks on the strap button. And it has a handle that you pull out and there's a little pin in there that coincides with the strap pin. So when you pull that out and slide it in, that pin now locks on the strap button. And when that's attached to your strap, now it's very secure. And to install that would be the same thing as installing your strap pin. It just goes in the guitar just like normal. The other style is the Dunlop style that has a little bit larger button, but it's the same as a reg regular strap button. And both of them, even if you don't have your strap with the, the joining strap lock, can still be used as a conventional strap button. So you would install that the same way as you would install your standard strap pin with both of these components on the guitar. So now we're going to go ahead and just uninstall that strap pin that we just installed and tightened up and we'll put on the strap lock button. So here I'm going to use the, uh, the shallower style and it has the same approximate screw hole. So we're going to be good there. Okay. Now that's secure on the body. Now we'll install that locking mechanism on the strap. So there, you have a nut and a washer. And generally you'll install it on the inside of your strap, just like you would install the strap on your guitar. So that goes through the hole and you can see, depending on the strap, sometimes it can be a little tight. And this one, I could, I could put it on and put the washer on and tighten it up. However, I think it will be a better idea to trim it down a little bit. So I'm just going to take some wire cutters and clip off just the inside corner like so. You can see how that looks. And I'll do the same thing on the other corner and that'll just give it a little larger hole. And it's a very easy way to give it a larger hole without trying to cut it or ream it out larger than that. So now you can slide that back into the strap and arrange it so the bottom of the strap lock, you know, the U part will be at the bottom so it'll cup it and lock it in. The pin is locking it in. However, it's added insurance to make sure that bottom area of the strap pin is also doing a lot of the work. So then you would put your washer on the strap and then install the nut. And you can use an open-ended wrench, an adjustable wrench, or a socket, in this case, a half inch socket wrench. Tighten that down as tight as you can get it. And now we have the lock installed on the strap. And how it works is you slide that strap pin over the button, and then you pull out this little handle and it's spring loaded. So you pull that out and now it's locked onto the guitar. So that's very, very secure. And then of course you do, you know, the same thing on the top strap button as well. So there we have the shallower style. Now I'll show you how to do the Dunlop style. 
same principle installing it on the body. Okay, that's locked on the body. Now this uh, arrangement is a little bit different. Instead of screwing onto the strap, I'm going to put it on the other end of this strap. You have a few different pieces. You have the outer washer, which is a cupped washer. And then you have an inner washer, which is a flat washer. An E-clip, that's kind of a spring clip. And then the actual locking mechanism, which is spring-loaded. And in this case, instead of pulling it out, you push in on the end button there. So you would start out by installing that locking mechanism inside the cupped washer. And that, the reason why it's cupped is so you don't accidentally press it. So we'll install the locking assembly. We'll, we'll put the, the locking assembly inside the cupped washer through the top of the strap. Then we'll turn it upside down. And on the inside, we'll put that flat washer, right? And now you can see when it's assembled, you'll have a little ring around the inside of that locking mechanism. And that's for this spring clip. So you'll put that spring clip in that slot. And then you will take some pliers or needle nose pliers or regular pliers. In this case, I'm using needle nose. And I'm going to grab the outside of the locking mechanism and then press that C-clip until it locks in. So now that won't come out. It's securely locked in and you can rotate it just to verify. And that's, that's recommended because you might think it's locked on there, but maybe one side is in that slot and the other side might be above it. So rotate it just to make sure that it is locked and it's not coming off. And then now you're set. So in this case, you would just press it in to the button and then press the center on the outside. And there's three little ball bearings that are spring loaded and they compress when you press that button. When you release it, then they expand and that's what locks it onto that button assembly. So there you have the two methods for attaching the two most popular strap locks on our guitars. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next episode of Gibson's Guide to Guitar Setup and Maintenance.